YouTube sidekick here in my trusty DHC6 Twin Otter with a video about how to use the Twin Otter's uh, autopilot system including an ILS landing. Now this is something that I've been working on for a while and when I finally uh, figured out how to make it work I really wanted to make a video about it. So we're in the cockpit we're just uh, setting up for the flight here. Uh, I'm setting the frequencies here on both of my nav radios to the ILS uh, that we'll be flying to, and I'll show you how we figured that out in a minute. And I'm setting the altitude here to 10K, which is going to be our cruising altitude. And just setting up a few other things. Now, one thing I do want to say is that this video really... Um, I'm not trying to make a video about how to do this in the real world. I'm not a commercial pilot. And, uh, and I, I'm not familiar with how to do, uh, how to use these kinds of systems in the real aircraft, but I did finally figure out how to make them work in, uh, the, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's really one that I wanted to make a video about. Uh, here I'm just checking the flight plan uh, so I can get some, uh, some headings, because I'm just trying to preset some cockpit instruments here, um, set them up so they're, uh, they're already preset to the headings we're going to want to use as we fly the flight plan. Uh, in a minute here, I'm actually going to pop out of Microsoft Flight Simulator and go to a little program called Little Nav Map, uh, and I will show you exactly uh, how we derive the flight plan. So, as you can see, I'm setting, I set one of my course indicators to the first course we're going to fly, and then I set the second one to the actual course of the runway where we're going to land. So. Um, before we go much further here, let me just take a minute and pop out to Little Nav Map, and we'll take a look at how we created this flight plan. If you haven't used Little Nav Map, um, you might want to give it a look. I find it to be a very useful flight planning tool, and it integrates well with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're planning a trip from Kingston, so we're going to set that as our destination airport, and then we're going to fly to Ottawa, and we want to land on runway 32 and use the ILS. We're noting that the frequency is 110.3 for the ILS. But uh, now Little Nav Map has a feature where we can actually, instead of just selecting uh, the Ottawa Airport as our destination, we can actually get it to load the procedure that we're going to use for ILS. So if we right-click on it and we say Show Procedures, we see all of the procedures that are available. The one we want is the Approach ILS 32. We click on that and we get it on screen, and then we just have to right-click again and say that we want to use that as part of our flight plan. And hey presto, we have a flight plan that includes the ILS-32 approach procedure for uh, McDonald Cartier Airport uh, YOW in Ottawa. It's as simple as that. And so basically all I did was save that and then export it in a format that Microsoft Flight Simulator can use, and then we just loaded it in as the flight plan. Uh, when we uh, set up our Twin Otter. And so now we're ready to uh, fly from Kingston to Ottawa and use the ILS approach. Okay, back in the cockpit now and uh, just about ready for takeoff. We set our frequencies. We've preset our course lines on our uh, two HSIs. And I think we're just about ready to get the party started. Parking brake off. And power coming on. There's that sound as the props catch up. And we're off down the runway. So we're going to depart straight out here on uh, runway 01. Uh, and then we're going to turn right. Uh, and we're going to come to... Uh, we're going to use GPS navigation at the beginning here. So after we take off, almost straight down the runway. Haha. -ha. Uh, we're going to climb out. Once we get established on a climb, uh, we're going to turn to our first heading, uh, which I set on the first, uh, the main HSI there. And then once we get uh, established on that heading and uh, get things um, stabilized, then we're going to start using the autopilot. So just coming straight out here. And climbing through a thousand feet. Okay, we're climbing out nicely. Just gonna start getting it trimmed out a little here for the climb and also turn onto something close to our initial course. 
so we can uh, enable the autopilot when we're more or less where we want to be. So trimming it out for climb, coming up through 2,000 feet, trying to intercept our GPS course line there. And now we're going to turn the autopilot on with this switch here. And we're going to hit the nav button. And now we're hands off. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to set the climb rate that I want. Uh, because when you first enable the autopilot it wants to uh, go to level flight. Okay, so to review all of that uh, little sequence of events there, we got established on nearly where we wanted to go. Uh, we have our uh, cruise altitude set to 10,000, so when we enabled the autopilot, the autopilot first wants to go to wings level flight. Um, we hit the nav button, so it now wants to pick up our GPS course. And then we went over to the Bendix over there on the right, and we set our vertical speed to uh, 1,600, 1,600 uh, feet per minute, which is about the climb rate that I know I can get at uh, the right speed. So I hit that, and so now we're fully on autopilot. Uh, the autopilot's getting us onto our GPS course, and it's getting us, uh, keeping us at that about that 1,600 uh, feet per minute climb rate. And now really all I have to do is manage the power um, and keep us um, about on speed, uh, about 106 uh, miles an hour, 106 knots, um, to, uh, for our cruise climb here. Now we're just going to basically climb out. The autopilot is flying the plane, and we're going to cruise. We're going to climb out to our cruise altitude of 10,000 feet. Okay, here we are almost at the top of our climb. That uh, buzzer that you heard means that we're coming up on within a uh, thousand feet of the uh, set altitude. Uh, we're still climbing a little bit less. Our climb rate's decreased a little bit uh, as we have uh, climbed, but that's okay. We're still climbing at a good rate, coming up at 10,000 feet. We're still in nav mode, so the autopilot is flying the plane. I'm going to pull the uh, props back to cruise setting now as we approach 10,000 feet and we're getting ready for our cruise. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because the autopilot uh, in the DHC-6 um, does take a, a little bit of um, getting used to, a little bit of experimentation to make it work. It's a combination of that Bendix autopilot that comes with the Garmin 43530 but it also has its own autopilot settings, as you can see. Uh, I kind of go back and forth between the two. Uh, I'm not sure if there are better ways of doing it, but these are the ways that work for me. Um, as I said, this is really a video about how to make uh, the model in Microsoft Flight Simulator work. It's uh, not necessarily anything uh, that is the approved way of doing it in the real aircraft, uh, but it was a bit of a challenge to figure out how to get all of the pieces working. Uh, wasn't always intuitive to figure out how to make that work, so I was pretty pleased when I finally managed to make it work. So uh, I wanted to uh, make a video to show you guys. So we're established on our cruise here. Again, the autopilot is flying the plane, has been since we were about, I don't know, a thousand feet off the ground. Uh, and my intention is to let it fly the plane basically all the way back to landing. And you can actually do that uh, in the Twin Otter uh, with the autopilot. So that's, uh, at least for me, that was quite an achievement. Okay, so we are set up here, and I think we're established on our cruise. And nothing to do except sit back and take a look at the view. See the light flashing in the middle of the dash there? That's actually the the trim indication lights so of the autopilot is continually trimming the aircraft to keep us level at 10k. 
and we're cruising at 140 knots which is our approved cruising speed so everything looks pretty good. Take a look at the Eastern Ontario countryside, the Rideau Lakes area here that we're flying over. For anybody who's familiar with the uh, Eastern Ontario area. Maybe we'll just take a quick look at the VFR map and take a look where we are. As you can see, we're flying over those lakes. It's a little bit larger bit easier than looking at the Garmin. So we're basically, uh, we're flying from Kingston up to Ottawa. We actually have uh, uh, another nav point Volag in the flight plan. I'm going to use that as the, uh, the uh, I wanted to send to essentially the, uh, the approach altitude at Volag. So I want to get down to uh, 3,000 feet at Volag. And then when we start picking up the ILS uh, localizer and then eventually the glide slope, uh, at Texan, um, then we should be set up to let the uh, autopilot land the plane. So I think we're all established here uh, on our cruise. Maybe we'll just uh, wind forward a little farther until we're almost ready to start preparing for our descent. We've been cruising for a little while, time to start thinking about our descent. We're 30 miles out from Volag, and at Volag we want to be down to 3,000 feet, just checking frequencies, checking the flight plan. So uh, there's a couple of rules we're going to use here to plan uh, our descent, at least that's how I do it. Um, the first is the rule of two, and that is that you take your air airspeed divided by two and add a zero. Uh, so 140 divided by 270, that's going to be 700 feet per minute is going to give us a 3% descent rate. And then the other thing is the rule of three, which is that when you're descending at 3%, um, about every three nautical miles is going to give you a thousand feet of descent. So putting those two things together, we're going to want to descend at 700 feet per minute, and we're going to want to start our descent, let's see, uh, we're going to want to descend 7,000 feet from 10,000 to 3,000, so we're going to want about 7,000 feet. We're going to want about 21 nautical miles. Eh, let's round that up a little just for safety's sake. Call it 25 nautical miles. So at 25 nautical miles from Volag, we are going to start a descent at 700 feet per minute. And of course, the autopilot's going to manage all of that for us. We just need to initiate it at the right time. So, as you can see, we're paralleling the Rideau uh, River system there now at the left-hand side, which is about where we expect it to be at around the time that we're, uh, we're starting our descent. Uh, I'll just tell you that from having checked it. Um, so, let's see, we're coming up on 25 miles to Volag here, and we've set our new set altitude to 3,000 feet, so the aircraft will descend to 3,000 and then stop once we go into vertical speed mode. And we're just waiting for the clock to wind down there to about 25 nautical miles so we can start the descent. It's coming up now. Okay, now we're at 25 nautical miles. We're going to reach over here, cancel altitude hold mode, and go into vertical speed mode. And we're going to set the down speed of 700. Uh, yeah, I hit 800, but then I popped it back up. So we're going to descend at 700 feet per minute. And then we are going to have to adjust the power here. Now you see, if we pulled back to 30 inches of uh, 30 pounds of torque, and we're going to have to pull back a little further. We want to keep the descent speed at around 140 because that's what we based our descent rate on. Okay, once again, the aircraft, the autopilot is flying the aircraft here. We're in nav mode, uh, so it is sticking to our GPS course, and we're in vertical speed mode. And as you saw, we set it to 700 feet down, so about a 3% descent rate, and so everything's looking good. So the one thing we can do is the uh, altimeter unwinds here 
is as we get to 9,000 feet, that will mean we have 6,000 feet to go, and we can check that against our distance. We want that to be, uh, you know, around uh, our 18 nautical miles would give us a 3% descent rate, and as you can see, as we go past there, we're still at uh, more than 21 out. Uh, so we lost a little bit. We had sort of four nautical miles of margin when we started down, now down to around three. So we're descending maybe a little slower than 3%, but not enough to upset our calculations. So we're just going to leave it where it is. And now we've got the power pulled back far enough that our speed is back to 140 knots. And um, we're getting close enough now that I think I can enable approach mode instead of nav mode. So I've clicked the approach button on the autopilot. And that just means that it will actually start actively looking for the localizer uh, and eventually the glide slope. And you can see we've got a middle yellow button up there uh, in the, the uh, warning lights. And that just says that the approach is armed and it's looking for um, the localizer uh, signal at this point. It hasn't actually picked it up yet, uh, but we're hoping as we get a little bit closer that we'll do that. So let's wind it forward a little more. All right, we're almost at the bottom of our descent. We're down uh, under 4,000 feet, coming up actually under 3,500. I only got a couple of nautical miles to go before we get to Volag. And the airport is over there somewhere. So, uh, we are in, uh, in, in terms of the autopilot, we're in approach mode, and we're in vertical speed mode, but we're coming to the point where we're going to be uh, in, attitude, in altitude hold mode as we reach 3,000 feet. You can now see that we've got two lights. One, uh, the upper one is for the glide slope. Uh, it's looking for a glide slope signal, and it's also looking for a localizer signal. That's the uh, second yellow light, the bottom yellow light. And what will happen is when it acquires those, then the buttons uh, to the right of those buttons will turn green. Uh, we're not doing anything. The autopilot is flying the plane at this point. We've passed Volag, as you can see on the, uh, the Garmin, and we're on our way to Texan. We're at 3,000 feet, which is where we want it to be. And we're pulling back the power just a little bit to bring our speed down as well. So we're down to 120 knots. We're still in cruise, though. So let's wind it just a little bit farther forward until we're just about ready to make our turn at Texan. Okay, here we are approaching Texan, coming up on one nautical mile from the place where we expect to find the turn. And we should be expecting it to find uh, the localizer sometime soon. And there it is. We've got a green uh, localizer light. So now we can go over here and actually change our HSI in the middle there to now be uh, working off the, the VOR, well, after off the ILS, rather than off of the GPS. And we'll set our... Uh, course line to runway heading which is 320 so once again the aircraft is flying the plane it's picked up the localizer it's making a turn to get on runway center line uh, we're not touching the altitude so we're flying at 3,000 feet we're expecting pretty soon here that we're going to pick up the glide slope and get another green light uh, and really our only job here at this point is managing power checking to make sure none of this has any impact on anything. It's just me uh, being obsessive to make sure everything's working. But it all is. So we're um, at a little bit over 110 knots. That's probably okay. Power is still pulled uh, well back. And I'm just uh, going to pull it back even farther and kill a little bit more speed in anticipation of picking up that glide slope here pretty soon. And once we pick up the glide slope, then uh, we're going to want, want to go into approach mode. We'll put the props back to full forward. There we go. Glide slope, green light, the nose comes down. And so now we're going to put the props in full forward mode here. 
And then we're just going to try and keep, uh, now we're going to try and decrease our speed down into the white range there. Some work around uh, 90 knots or so. Get the flaps started down here. So really the only thing I'm managing in the aircraft right now is the power. And of course in the Twin Otter, it's, it takes a little bit of jockeying to uh, on approach to get exactly where you want to be. We're a little bit fast. Just trying to pull that back without pulling it back too far. The aircraft is flying the course and also the, the descent rate. We got the two green lights there uh, below the tail number nameplate. So the autopilot is flying the ILS approach We're a little bit fast here. Just trying to pull the power back without going too far. Coming to our final checkpoint before final. And we're getting speed pulled back. Now it's coming back a little bit farther than I'd like. We're just jockeying the power here. The nose going up and down is the autopilot in response to the power, so not me flying the plane. And we're just going to keep juggling the power here a little bit. Once we get to around the runway threshold, we're going to want to be at 80 or lower, but this far out, especially with uh, flying the ILS approach, I'm okay flying a little bit faster. But now we're solidly in the white there, so we can start uh, getting some more flaps down. And you can see them coming down, the uh, very sophisticated flap system on the Twin Otter here. Get some flap. Uh, on the outer edges, the flapperons, and then you also get the inner flaps that come all the way down. final for the runway, just a couple of nautical miles out. Pulling back the power now to get down into the under 80 as we approach the threshold of the runway. The autopilot is still flying the aircraft at this point. Uh, my hands are off the controls except for power. Just trying to keep it somewhere between a little bit less than 80, that's okay. Just got to keep juggling it though. 500 feet. ILS, uh, the autopilot's still flying the ILS approach. I'm actually going to let it go all the way to the ground. Pull back on the power, letting its speeds crept up there again. Just keep juggling the power. Autopilot's flying the plane. We're on center line, it all looks good. Should be hitting the minimums here soon, but we're obviously that's not going to be an issue. Okay, there are the minimums. We see the runway, we're in the middle of the runway, our approach looks good. Autopilot's flying the plane, I'm just flying the power. And as we're coming up on the threshold here, Pull the power back. 30. Pulling the power back. 30. A little bit of a stall horn there, and we're down. And so that was a complete landing approach uh, flown entirely by the autopilot. I'm finally turning it off there now. And put the uh, props in uh, beta mode. Apply a little bit of reverse thrust. back over to the center line here and welcome to Ottawa the nation's capital so we flew that entire flight uh, pretty much on autopilot from about a thousand feet off the ground all the way back to uh, on the ground here in Ottawa uh, for me that was quite an accomplishment to figure out how to do that uh, hopefully this is a little bit of help to any of you who've been uh, enjoying the Twin Otter and trying to get the autopilot sorted out
And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.